How's it going, everybody out in YouTube land? Uh, we're in a remote off-grid site for some high-profile people, so we can't exactly say where we're at, just that uh, we're breathing deep in the forest. And uh, we're on this compound. It's all off the grid. Uh, you can kind of see some of the water room behind me. Um, we kind of have a power and water combination room. Uh, this project's amazing. They have kind of a small PV array. It's only about 3,000 watts, but it does have an 8,000-watt hydro system. I hope I can take you guys down and see some of the hydro there. Um, that's kind of uh, what we're working on. Uh, this is kind of an evolution project. I've been maintaining it for a few years. Um, somebody else originally installed it. And, and of course, the, a lot of the projects that I go into off there that other people have done, it had a lot of kind of uh, misdesigns in it. So we, we've replaced batteries before. They go through cycles of batteries here very fast. It's almost under battery, um, but it, it was only used originally um, seasonally, and so now they're starting to step it up, so we're going to go through one more round of small batteries while we finish all the rest of the infrastructure, and the next few years we'll probably upgrade this to a full bank of the, the lithium iron phosphates. So um, you can see kind of behind me, we're getting ready to do some mock up We're going to add um, 24 L16 AGM batteries for the time being on the existing rack, but what we want to do is uh, we want to kick the battery rack down, and we want to make it modular. We're going to wind up adding another inverter so that we can run the hydro directly through an inverter and pretty much make it a digital battery charger. So uh, the first thing we do typically is we'll come in, we're going to lay out all of our pieces that we're thinking about using. Using a project like this where it's out in the middle of nowhere, we typically bring way too much stuff. And uh, we like just to lay it out and see what's going to flow and how we feel the best about it. We're usually trying to make these look awesome as well as be safe and functional and easy to use for the customer. So basically, you can kind of see our rough idea of how our power flow is going to be through our new uh, midnight battery enclosure. Uh, this is going to allow us to put breakers for every string of batteries, as well as uh, each inverter system that's going to be kind of tagged off. So if we come into here, uh, you can kind of see this is a tight room, so I'm not too sure how much of this we're going to be able to see uh, while filming. But basically, right now, we've got three strings of batteries. Uh, these are the rolls, AGMs. These did do it, but they're starting to get to a lower capacity level because there's been days where they probably cycled these things three times. Um, yes, it's not optimal, but again, um, on some of these projects where there's a lot of construction going on, um, these things have been hit pretty hard, and getting prepped to go through a long winter service, uh, serviceability for propane and fuel is very tough, so they wanted to replace them ahead of time. So, Again, we have uh, three strings of uh, the L16s. These are six volts, so they have about roughly 1,200 amp hours of storage. Uh, if we roll over here to the other side, they're working off the Xantrex XW platform, which I haven't really shown this yet, but we also have, we have the same exact system at our off-grid house, and it's running our wood shop. And so since putting that in, I've become a lot more familiar with the XW system. I myself prefer Outback. I like the Radian. Um, I think that uh, with the experiences I've had with their tech support and their product, that is the way that I typically gravitate towards, that I feel more comfortable with the control system. But what I've learned is this system is a piece. Um, that, that we put this thing through its paces, running our dust collector, our cable saw, and all the stuff that we use. And these two inverters, they're effectively running on this property. They're running five houses, guest quarters. I mean, these things really are, are, are doing a lot and have worked very well since they've been put in about, I don't know, six, seven years ago. So this is a rough overview of what we got going on. Uh, we'll get some more video as Kane and I start building and show you kind of how we do the layout and what our thoughts are as we're wiring all this stuff up. So uh, here's our day one, just our rough layout, and uh, we'll be back soon. How's it going, everybody? Hey, we did it. Uh, we got the full upgrade done. Uh, it's been about a day and a half, and uh, we got everything up and running. Uh, we came in that second day, uh, we bypassed the whole system and ran directly off a 50 kW generator for about, I don't know, it took us about nine hours to, to rebuild the whole system for the battery portion. Uh, but it turned out great, and we got everything up and running. So, uh, what we really did is we used the existing battery rack, um, we just replaced it with the batteries that were in before, before they were uh, rolled, um, I think they're S530 ATM batteries. They lasted in about four years. There might be a little bit of life left, but they're really remote. And they're trying to get everything prepped for this winter because we don't want to have any winter time in this failure. So we came in and we replaced them with uh, full rubber batteries this time because they actually make the roll. Uh, so basically, we got uh, string one, two, and three. Um, one other thing that we did different this time, um, as I learned, 
and more to in the off-grid world. Um, before we had the three strings um, wired at 48 volts, and then we parallel them all, and then ran dual feeds back to the inverter. Well, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to wind up getting another inverter in so that we can make the hydro system more efficient and actually parallel the hydro and the 14 JW. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to run each string of batteries with independent battery cables and uh, breaker protection them all. So we added the midnight battery enclosure. And uh, this is a great uh, addition for larger systems or systems that you know you're going to expand on. Uh, because over here on the side we have multiple spaces for bigger break for adding breakers. Um, right now we have three 250s for each string. Um, so like let's say there's a problem with one string of batteries. They can actually turn off one string, continue going. If we need to service them, we can shut down a string of batteries at a time and keep working on it. Uh, there's room to add uh, PV breakers in here, all different types of stuff. So this is a very versatile unit. Uh, and when we come back uh, for next season's upgrade, we're going to be able to put another XW inverter right here. And I'll probably use the midnight uh, enclosure that has all the breakers. It's much more condensed. And we're only adding one inverter that's effectively going to bring the hydro up to 40 AC. And it's going to allow us to pretty much make it like a, a digital battery charger as the hydro, uh, the power production adjusts. We're going to be able to change the charging uh, current from it so that we can decrease the charging as the production of the hydro is less. Um, and so then it will just basically feed the batteries and uh, pretty much run the compound off of that. Uh, these batteries for a, this project really are more of a capacitor and they just slow uh, slow down the D-cell and, and minimize the generator runtime. Um, it's so far out here and there's not very good solar exposure, they kind of know that they're going to use a generator and um, this just decreases how much they really have to run. So again, our power flow for this system is the full river batteries into the midnight battery combiner and then it flows around into the XW inverters which powers the facility. And then uh, over in this room that we have over here, they've also done some upgrades. Um, this is all done by uh, Eads Water Service out of Redding, California. And uh, this is a pretty high-end water room. Uh, we like seeing it as well. They've upgraded it and they now have a PLC, a programmable logic controller, which is able to uh, modify and add the, uh, the chemicals that are needed to keep this water safe. They, they, they get all the water here from a spring, so uh, getting rid of bacteria. Um, e. coli. Um, they basically have a whole filtration system that's cleaning everything, backwashing it, adding any chemicals that it needs to break down the bacteria, and then they also have, so have a full UV filtration system that also really gives them that last layer of, of defense for water. So this is probably one of the coolest water rooms that we've seen. Uh, until we build ours, we're getting ready to build a pretty, pretty cool one as well. That's one of our next step. So, uh, here, let's take you guys outside and we'll go show you what they do have out here. So we get out. So, it's kind of funny because uh, they got about five houses here. Um, they probably use way more power than some of, uh, some of our smaller off-grid houses that have more battery, more solar. I have a lot more solar, but basically we got 12 panels right here. These, I think, are about 230s. And this is pretty much what just um, supplements the battery during the day. And they, they pretty much mostly charge this system off of the generator until we can get the hydro running a lot better. So uh, if you turn around, we can kind of see you know, a little bit of you know where we're at. It's beautiful. And uh, we're, again, pretty fortunate to, to get to work in a lot of the places that we, we go to. So. <laughs> I'm burning up. <laughs> Alright everybody, we want to get home. It's been a long few days for us. And we put in some good hours, moving a lot of batteries. And uh, we'll see you again pretty soon. Thanks. Peace.